The best engineering students aren't those good little boys who perfect their report card and never miss an assignment, but rather those that take initiative to develop the real engineering skills like Elon Musk, Nikola Tesla, and the Wright brothers. I myself may have not reached their level yet, but I've still independently made my own engineering projects, worked on mechanical designs for personal clients, worked in engineering internships, and I'm now mentoring engineering students like you here on this platform. If you can't tell, I literally live, sleep, and breathe engineering, so listen closely because I'm about to tell you how to become a top 1% engineering student. It was the summer of 2024 after I'd finished my second year of studying engineering in university that I decided that I would start making my own personal projects independently. And I even decided to document my projects and make videos about them and talk about them on YouTube. I started small by talking about mechanisms and making models of them. And then I started making models of machinery. And then it got even more complicated when I started implementing the theoretical knowledge that I was learning in my classes, like fluid mechanics principles and gear principles. And I'd even sometimes be talking about thermodynamics when I made models of engines and stuff. It was because I made these personal projects that I was able to develop my career only as an engineering student. Because not soon after I started making these projects, I started getting emails from people around the world who had seen my content on YouTube about this engineering projects and they wanted me to do design work for them despite the fact that it was clear that I wasn't only an engineering student. So I accepted some of their offers and I started doing real engineering work for them, providing mechanical designs for their projects. I started to learn how to talk with clients like an engineer would. I started how to prototype like an engineer would. I learned how to provide real solutions to real world problems like an engineer engineer would. And I not only independently found clients to do engineering work with, but I also managed to land internships way easier than anyone around me. And the number one reason was because of these projects. I got an engineering internship offer after two weeks of hunting for an internship. Two weeks when it takes people months. And in that internship that I absolutely nailed, one of the recruiters was literally watching my channel while he was talking to me. He saw this rotary engine model that I was talking about and he found it extremely impressive because I was talking about all of the thermodynamics principles of it. I was talking about the engine principles of it. And then he started asking me questions. He was like, oh, how did you actually design this? Which 3D printer do you use? Which softwares do you use? He kept asking me questions and I answered them so confidently because I actually made those projects on my own and I know the exact details of the design process. My confidence just skyrocketed at that point because I just knew, I just knew that these people wanted me to work for them. All because I took initiative to make my own engineering projects and therefore independently develop the skills that my classes simply didn't teach me. So the one message I want you to take away from this video is that projects is the absolute cheat code that will help you develop your career when you're only an engineering student. That's fucking crazy, is it not? So start now. I know you have so many questions, but I answer those questions in my program where I teach you how to build projects, whether you've made uh, personal projects before or you're an advanced engineering student who wants to start making complex shit. Not asking questions can literally waste months of your time because it was in my first engineering internship that I ever worked at where I was assigned my first project within probably the first few days of being at that internship. So my boss came up to me and he introduced me to this project. He provided a few details, like a paragraph at max. And then he said, ask me if you have any questions. And I was like, okay. So I started working on the project. I started grinding on it for months, extruding, revolving, concentric mating, extrude cutting, fucking everything in SolidWorks until I came up with a final design. Yes, I finished the project. But while I was making this project, I didn't ask any of the literal professional engineers around me any questions concerning my project. Now at this company, after a design was completed, there has to be something called a design review, where you call in a bunch of engineers, including the supervisor and even fabricators into a room to basically look at your design and see whether it's uh, good to go and be fabricated. So I set up my design review. I got a bunch of people in this room and I'm thinking like, oh, this is probably gonna take like 20 minutes. They're gonna see my design. They're gonna be like, okay, yeah, this is good. Let's actually make it. But no, they start fucking roasting my design. They're like, oh, there's an error here. There's a flaw here. How are we gonna manufacture this? How are we even gonna fit these two subwells together? How are we gonna fit this linear actuator into the subwell? I must've taken like 20 plus notes 
in that single design review when I expected to have no problems with that design going into it. And bro, what a fucking embarrassing experience that was because I'd, I'd spent months of my time, as I said, into that design project and I basically had to do a complete redesign for it. That is the importance of asking questions, okay? And you don't have to start asking questions once you get an engineering internship. You have to start right now while you're an engineering student, okay? Let me ask you, are you asking the professor questions after the lecture is done? Are you raising your hand mid-lecture? Are you going to office hours to ask additional questions about your homework? And it doesn't even have to be your professors. Are you asking your peers next to you that you don't even know? Are you asking the TAs of this class? Whatever it is, if you want to be a top 1% engineer, then you have to ask questions and maximize the opportunity you have of having professional engineers around you because that is the fast lane to any sort of growth. At the start of my second year of university, there was this one dude in my thermodynamics class who sat next to me at the front of the class. And this dude would ask so many deep questions about the the topics that we were talking about. While everyone around me was so confused and too shy to ask questions or didn't even know what questions to ask in the first place, this dude was going fucking ham, at least like 10 questions per lecture. Okay, maybe not that much, but he asked a lot of questions. And as I said before, asking questions is a clear trait of a top 1% engineering student. So I could just tell that this dude was locked in. This dude was smart as hell. So after a few thermodynamics lectures, as I've taken note of him and his smartness, I approached him. I was like, yo, dude, you're too smart for this class. <laughs> that awkward statement alone was all I said to form a friendship with this top 1% engineer. We introduced one another, we talked throughout classes, I asked him questions, he asked me questions. I'm not even lying, this dude must have had like a 99% average or some shit in engineering school, how crazy is that? And I know that this guy was not a cheater at all. He had 100% morals. He was some dude from a small town. He was a Christian dude like me who believed in honesty. All of the work that he did was on his own, using his own fucking brain. He was nothing like all of the other pretensioners that I've seen who use ChatGPT to cheat on their exams and assignments, who plagiarize off of their friends, and all in all act without integrity. And we've been friends for about like two years now. And during that time period that we were friends and that we were connected, we did course group projects together and we absolutely dominated. So imagine my friend right here who is a top 1% smart as hell engineer partnering up with a me, someone who takes initiative to develop real engineering skills, someone who lives, sleeps and breathes engineering. Imagine the power that was there when we teamed up. And furthermore, this guy that I met had other top 1% engineering student friends. And when it came to group projects, he also invited him them to our group. So just imagine the results that we had in every single group project. There it is, the roadmap to becoming a top 1% engineering student. Build projects, ask questions, and connect with the top 1% engineers. Becoming a top 1% engineer is not comfortable, okay? You have to go beyond the bare minimum of just your standard classes and what everyone else tells you to do. You have to tell yourself what to do when you're uh, becoming a great engineer. Now just remember, when something is important enough, you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. Elon Musk.